Can I have a piece of toast? Get the fuck out of here, Jack. And they would go through stacks and stacks of big boxes of porno films. <laughs> and, and he would be like, this is a very popular title. And I'm not going to repeat any of the titles, but they're usually some of the more abhorrent titles that you might think. Would of. Bright Lights, Big Titties have been in there? Or? Yes, it probably would have. But, you know, I mean, that's not really abhorrent. No. That's just sort of a clever title, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> um, and and sometimes uh, the owner would come take me aside and say, Dave, what do you think of these? And I'm like, well, this looks interesting. This is visually interesting. It might lure people in to rent mm-hmm. it or something. Now, did you get like, – because kind of my porn history was – First, they were somewhat classy with it, where it would just be like, you know, people kind of making out on the box and it would be have like a, a suggestive title and you wouldn't really see anything. Or you might you, know, you might see an attractive woman yeah, like standing on the box, went, looking seductive, things like that. Something like then that. Then about um, I'd say like by the mid 90s, they just didn't care. And it'd be like full, full boobage, full veg, full ween right in your face. Well, I. If you remember, you remember the movie Clerks. Yeah. Uh, and they would have titles that just like explicit. Uh, Randall, Randall is is reciting yeah. titles yeah. Uh, that they want, I mm-hmm. guess, for the store. Meanwhile, there's a woman and her child there mm-hmm. <laughs> waiting patiently for him to be finished. From what I heard is like he felt actually the, the actor actually felt very uncomfortable doing that. <laughs> Well, I I would be comfortable too. I'm uh, comfortable too. And if I were Kevin Smith, I'd be really uncomfortable yeah. shooting it up. But he was probably they were probably friends of his family, so they're like, okay, we'll do this for Kevin. Put, put, put earplugs <laughs> in the kids' ears or something, or something like that. But uh, yeah, the titles that Randall reads off are kind of like what happened at that time. And Clerks came out when ninety five 90, or ninety four? Yeah, ninety three, maybe even ninety three. Yeah, what's in that let's, area? Let's it's like ninety. I think it's ninety. To the Googles. Yeah. Let's check. Uh, Clerks uh, came out in 94. 94. Okay. Probably made in 94. It was probably shot in 93. Uh, yeah, so y- you're right. Uh, now, basically, I think the adult movie industry had started. It was all typically 42nd Street, Times Square. You would have actual professionally made movies on 35 mm-hmm. or 16 millimeter camera. Just like you would see in Boogie or, Nights or, or something like that. Or even like maybe your Swedish erotica loops that you would buy mm-hmm. and take home and look at through your projector. That's another thing I want to bring up is the LaBelle projector and, and other similar yeah. things. Before we had home video, we had actual film. You know, maybe not complete, but very close to that kind of cinema experience that you're expecting. When it, it, If you want to look at a movie at home and everything you know about movies is from going to the movies. That's why home video was such a revolutionary mm-hmm. thing. It sort of took that and went for ran ran with the ball more mm-hmm. with that but these these were very professionally made and then in the advent of video they quadrupled their consumer base because they just made movies strictly for video and that in part is sort of what killed the adult theatrical distribution model they don't uh, and you know what you know after a and time rightly so let's face it this is the sort of thing you want in a house where you can put a splash guard down yeah, and clean you, up you, and you know you don't yeah you, you don't, don't want that it just creates this weird sort of public nuisance of weird <laughs> creepy guys in a theater doing things and it's yes. just, it just doesn't it's not good there was um there's a really <laughs> yeah, there's a funny scene in a john waters movie uh called oh cecil b Demen- cecil demented. b demented yes cecil b demented um where they're apparently they're in a porno theater and like immediately even as the titles are rolling, and my wife made a comment about this because we were watching the movie, right? They immediately start whipping it out, and everyone in the audience starts jerking mm-hmm. off watching an adult movie, mm-hmm. all together in a movie yeah. theater. And even my wife is complaining. She's like, "All they're doing is rolling the titles, and these people are jerking off already." <laughs> it's like, I thought you waited at least until you got into the foreplay before you whipped it out. No, that's going to give us a mature rating for this video. Thank oh, you. Oh, who cares? Much. And I mean, like John Waters would make fun of adult movies in that way. Like he did Polyester, and he had Tab Hunter play playing the owner of a quote unquote art house drive-in. And what it was, all it did was just show smutty movies, but he called it art. It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, so, so as we get into like the late '80s, going into the early '90s, and up until now, now it's it's all strictly video. Uh, and, and and again, as the technology improves, 
uh, then the movies look better. And, and I'm going to say this. I'm going to be very sexist. The women are hotter now, too. Because for some reason, the stigma is seems to be less. So they get, like, actually, like, attractive women and not, like, these sort of well, skeezy yeah. women that they could get. Now, like, the women are, like, they're getting top-shelf women on these things. Well, you know, you'll notice, I mean, like, like when Deep Throat came out, it was, like, an enormous sensation. It was a huge box office mm -hmm. hit. And Linda Lovelace turned around and said that she was basically drugged, yeah. manipulated, coerced, uh, maybe even raped in this movie. Uh, and she became an advocate for feminists. Feminists grabbed hold of her as as the perfect poster child for the victimization that they saw that was occurring with women back then. Now, that's possible, yes. Nowadays, it is an industry. These these girls get into it when they're modeling they make these decisions on their own. They have a lot they of They make a lot more money than the men, of course. You know. they, yeah, they make, oh, but they make of course, way more the money. Because you notice, the, I mean, the like... The people that really make the money are the producers, but yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, the producers make a lot of money, too. they they certainly very comfortable. But these, you'll notice, I mean, there's like thousands upon thousands of porno actresses and only about like 10 or 11 actors. And you, if you're watching, if you, if you know a lot of these porno films... Uh, you'll notice that they keep just, just bringing the same 10 or 11 well, guys I mean, into that's a every damn movie. skill uh, to be able to have. I guess it did. Uh, also, you know, they, they also, first of all, the guys are getting better looking too, honestly. And they're, they're more muscular. Their, their things are bigger. You know, it's, it's a more sort of super powered. I mean, they're all, I think I saw a documentary one time. Um, I, I, like the, the quality of the, Turgidity is better, <laughs> I guess is the word, um, because they basically. Well, yeah, they I, basically buy. Me and Bronwyn used to watch a show called Family Business, yeah. starring Seymour yeah, Butts and, I did, I just and his family. Yeah. yeah, and and basically, I mean, like with the advent of Viagra. Yeah, they Viagra. The, in fact, they, they literally inject it directly into the schwanz. Oh, they don't waste the time. They get right up in there. So, like, when you watch a thing, these guys are like, because if you watched porn from the '80s, the guys sometimes they're struggling. <laughs> Sometimes you know, yeah, they the are. Okay. They're going for hours. You know, it's not... another another interesting story to relate to that is that several mainstream directors started in porn. Mm -hmm. uh, among them, Brian De Palma, Francis Coppola, and Barry Sonnenfeld. And Barry Sonnenfeld told a very funny story. Uh, well, it, it's 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 not. It, he was talking about his time working in porn. He did work in porn. He shot porn. He's one of the greatest cinematographers uh, and mm -hmm. filmmakers, actually. You know, he shot movies for the Coen Brothers. He went off and directed well, the Adam's Family All I can movies. think of is Men when Black he did stuff, such. it must have been the early 80s because he was a pretty well-known cinematographer. Like, say, he was he was uh, Danny DeVito's cinematographer in, say, like, Throwing Mama from the Train. And that's well, late his 80s. First, so... I think his first big job was Blood, Blood Simple, Simple, which was 84. 84 so... He was making, yeah, he was making porno uh, with motion picture film cameras in, you know, from the from the early 70s on to uh, the early 80s uh, because he had gone to film school, he studied film, and he couldn't find any work. And the only way he could pay the bills was shooting porn. And he said basically that the, the idea with, with porn was you shot a regular movie and then you shot your hardcore scene separately. Mm -hmm. So you would shoot a regular movie with a regular narrative and a storyline and anything that might be admissible for like a, even a PG rating. They didn't curse as much back well, then. Well, I mean, but, you can't – because the way porns work, I mean, like, they usually will be a scene and then something will happen in that scene. I don't think you can shoot all the stuff that wasn't porn in a scene. Well, you would I have mean, to you, shoot all of the stuff separately. It would be like a three-day process. But, you I mean, you can't – but, town, no, but it, I would think it would cost more money to, like, do, do a setup in a room, like, have it almost go to the action – then leave and well, then come back and then actually shoot the action. I would think that. The well, you would make would... sure that you had. You would make sure you had all your continuity settled, right, like what right. costumes, what the location. I'm not a porn but director. Also, you I don't have to remember. I would just think that for for. The same... You also have to remember. I mean, this was mainly a New York business, and they shot in New York. And New York in the early '70s was not as expensive as it is now. They didn't have to have union crews. They didn't have any kind of harassment. And you could just do whatever you wanted. And a lot and of people that were forget safety inspectors. Financing. Forget safety inspectors or aides or yeah, they didn't like have anything like that. And or... also, the people who financed these movies were kind of like you know, shifty guys named Vinny. You know, people like that. He said the hardest part of working on a porno film. He said it was pretty damned easy actually. Uh, just you know, once you're lit and ready to go, uh, the hardest part was waiting for the cum shot. Yeah. 
Well, see, that's what like he said. I said. He said you would have to be sitting there for two hours waiting for a cum shot, and then when the guy's just about ready, then you roll then your you cameras and, and do you it. Do. Well, see, it's a little easier now. Like I said, with the Viagra, the guys are usually like hard and ready to go. Yeah, now, now you get like, and the guys are, have, and like, the guys are, are very professional, and they're like, the guys that come into it now, it's like they know what they're getting into. They almost like train for it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so they know what they're, they're like very professional. They go in, they know what they're doing. They're able to do the aim and everything. Like they know what they're doing. Whereas before, uh, whereas yes. in that case, it was just, can a guy get it up? Can a guy kind of do it? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're, we're good. <laughs> Is he attractive? We don't yeah. care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now like you got, like you have a lot of, uh, well, not a lot. You have a handful of good looking mm -hmm. guys with, with uh, presentable packages for that. And this is there, there are, and now, there are markets for everything. No matter what you want to see, you can see it. And the internet, it, uh, in a way, uh, it provided a lot of exposure for that. But it also, no pun intended, but it also kind of killed their business too because there's so much out there. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot like what the mainstream studios have to go through. But at its peak, uh, the the adult film industry was making way more money than mainstream movies. Mm -hmm. We're talking; they were making billions when the mainstream movie industry was only making hundreds of millions. Mm -hmm. And uh, in video, real, and it's been argued that 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 the uh, that the adult uh, film industry really is what made. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, the video we were, industry when we were explode. talking about magnetic video, <clears throat> um, I think, like, okay, they started like 70, yeah, 77, right? Like, he, he just kind of like the inkling of his starting was like 77, I think, magnetic video. Right. Okay. Yeah. They were probably already cranking out their porns before that. Like, they were probably like, wait a minute, we have a VCR? We have, we have this thing we can, they were probably like 76. So I mean, they were probably yeah. like, as soon as the first VHS, because the first betas, came out like 76 and the first VHSs were coming out like maybe six months later. And, uh, so that, yeah, they were probably just starting as magnetic video was starting then. So like 77, they, yeah, yeah. Porn and porn was an industry where you didn't necessarily care what the movie was no. about. You were renting it for one reason. Renting there. People were, people were probably buying or buying, or you were buying. Or but yeah. Renting. But like you, you would just grab tapes. Yeah. You didn't really care what was on them. Um, I remember one time I was with a friend of mine. We went into a convenience store, and he he just grabbed a whole stack full of like porn and big boxes. I think they were on sale for like ten dollars each or something. Mm -hmm. He just grabbed a whole bunch, and I, I said, "Dude, look at the top one!" And it was a gay one. <laughs> it was it was it was a gay it was a gay parody of the movie Rambo. I don't care. That... And I think you can imagine what it's about. And he's like, "Oh shit!" I don't care. I mean, that... that... You should really separate he's these, dude. Like, I... Put them between gay and he's straight. Like I, I don't care. The guy's got big tits and he's pretty. I don't care. <laughs> Maybe you'll look at the cover and see a a, a, a woman with large I'll breasts. I'll just squint my assume. eyes. Okay, I can work with I'll this. just grab that. Care, you know? But at the time, I, it was so hard to just see a breast. It was. <laughs> it really. You were like so. You were so happy. Just. To, I mean, and damn it, we were thanks. Turn that shit off, man. What's wrong with you, man? Get the other record. Damn. 